Today let's have a quick look at how to make macros or basically templates of effects you've made in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion tab. Uh, so you can save them for later use without having to do it again or maybe give it to friends or even sell them if you want. So um, yeah, let's not waste any time. So right here I've got a clip in a timeline, right, of just like some time lapse. Let's say I want to make a zoom effect right at the end so I can transition to the next clip. So I'll move the playhead to, to the last frame and maybe move back seven frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just pressing the arrow key on the keyboard, by the way. And okay, on the seventh frame, I'm just going to make a cut here. I'm going to select this end portion and go into the Fusion tab. Now, first thing, this is the input and this is the output. So right now, there's nothing going on. So let's add a transform node, maybe. Uh, transform. Okay, there you go. Add it in between the input and the output. And so right now we've just got a seven frame section. So for the first frame, I'm going to go to the transform node and put in a keyframe for the size, right? And then I'm going to move the frame or the playhead to the last frame. And then here I'm going to change the size to let's say maybe 2.5, just as an example. And yeah, let's play it again. So right now we've got a keyframe and the effect is basically zooming in our clip, right? So just for example purposes, let's just add an another node. So just space again, and I'm going to use the directional blur, uh, add it here. And maybe I'll change the zoom length to like 0.3 and change the type to zoom. There you go. So now you've got the transform effect with the keyframe and also the zoom effect to make it like a quick blur, blurry zoomed in. So if we go to the uh, our clip in the timeline, now you can see it as like a zoom effect at the end. So obviously if we're doing this properly, we, we will probably like finesse all the effects here so that the motion are like smoother and more beautiful. But uh, this is just an example of how to make macros. So let's go ahead and make our macros. So let's say we don't want to keep doing these um, effects every time. We're just gonna highlight these two nodes here that we just put in just now. And we're gonna right click and then we go to go to macro and create macro. And this little window is gonna pop up. Firstly, let's just name our macro. You can name it whatever you want. So maybe I'll just call it test for now. And if you look below, uh, these are all the parameters that you can basically choose to make editable or interactable by the user of this macro. So obviously right now there's two uh, parameters already ticked. So the transform, the input of the transform node is ticked. And also the output of the directional blur node is also already ticked because obviously if someone wants to use this this macro or this group of nodes, uh, they need to be able to input the media in into the transform node. So that's the uh, that's the input, and also output the result from the directional blur node. So that's why the output is already ticked for you. But obviously you can make other value uh, editable as well. For example, we might want to uh, user to be able to change the length of the blur and maybe uh, the center of the transform, let's say, just for example. Obviously you can choose whatever you want. Let's say if you're doing a text template, you might want the user to be able to edit the font of the text. And um, But one thing to keep in mind though is you probably shouldn't give the user the choice to edit any parameter that, that you've already put a keyframe in or set keyframes for. So obviously in this effect, I've already set keyframes for the size of the transform node. So it's like have a zoom in effect. So we probably don't want to, the user to be able to edit that. So I, I'm not going to take like the, uh, the size parameter here. Okay, so let's say you're happy with this. You just go to uh, close and it will ask if you want to save it. I'll just go to yes. And uh, maybe I'll just save it to a desktop in the test folder. And you can name your file name differently to your macro name as well. If you want, you can call it like a Thai photos lame effect or whatever. <laughs> and when you uh, save it to your windows, you will see that name. But when you bring it in, then you'll see the uh, the name of the macro. So I just save it here. I just call it the same thing. Okay, so now I've saved it. So whenever you want to do this effect again, instead of having to create these two nodes every time and set all the parameters and keyframe, I can just go to my uh, folder where I saved it, the test folder, and just drag in this macro we just saved just now into the Fusion window. And as you can see, it's called test. So now I can just connect my uh, input or original clip into this macro here, and then just output the effect from this macro here. So now we play it. Now we get the exact same effect without having to create this new uh, node every time. And also if you click on the test node, you can see that there are, there are a few parameters that are editable. So obviously I've ticked that you can, the user can edit the center of the transform. So, you know, you can they can move it around or the, 
the length of the blur effect as well, the user can change. So obviously, as I said, if you're doing like a text template or something like that, you can maybe uh, choose the parameter, let's say the font of the text and the color of the text to be editable. So when the user uses it, they can just click here and you know change the font of the text or the color or whatever or anything basically you, that you can um, you you might want okay so that's how to make uh, macros uh, super easy really but, but um let's have a quick look at another example where uh, you might have more than one input or even out output so let's say um in this effect here i've used the original clip i connected one to the blur node right here and also one to the transform node right here and then I merge them together back here and then I created an output so basically I just taken the original image uh, and processed it two different ways so we have one in the middle here and like an outer blur area so let's say in this case we want to save this group of nodes here as a macro right so I just again highlight all three and then I'll obviously go to uh, right click go to macro and create macros and okay let's name our macro test 2 now in this case you can see that there's already three parameters uh, ticked so that the user can interact with. Obviously to use this macro right you need to be able to connect the uh, the input clip to the blur branch and also to the transform branch. So if you look carefully at the parameter you can see that the input of the transfer node that uh, transform node is already ticked to be interactable with and also the input of the blur node is also ticked and then obviously the output from the merge node where you get the final result is also ticked so if we save it as is the name uh, input will be the same for both the input of the transform node and also the blur input will be called input as well so when you when the user kind of uses your macro they might kind of get confused a bit so it's probably better if you name them clearly so the user can you know connect the right thing to the right node obviously in this case it doesn't matter because I'm connecting from the original clip so it doesn't matter if I like swap this around it will be exactly the same but obviously in some cases you might not be connecting just one node to your macro you might have one from the original clip connecting to one node and maybe like a text template connecting to another node or something like that so let's just name them quickly so in the transform I'll type in transform input and for the blur input I'm just going to type in blur input okay and again I'm just going to click uh, close and yes I want to save it uh, let's just save it to the same folder the test folder and just name it test2 this time okay I press save okay now that I've saved it it's in the test folder so I'm just going to drag this effect in to the fusion tab and as you can see this macro will have two input right and if you hover your mouse over the input you can see that Oh, you can see, oh, this one is the blur input and this one is the transform input. So if you want to like connect your node, input node, you can connect it to the right one. Uh, to choose, you just right click your mouse and drag and then you can choose, okay, I want to connect this to the blur input and then connect this to the transform input. But again, obviously in this case, it doesn't matter. And then for the output, I'm just going to output out from the test two, and we get this exact same effect as these three nodes here without having to redo it every time so you can save it uh, again to use yourself give to friends or sell it if you want well okay i've been getting quite a few messages from a number of people who say like okay they want to create their own macros or templates as well how would you you know do it so i hope this clip answers your questions and prove somewhat useful <laughs> hopefully maybe i'll see you again next next time i guess bye